Welcome to Pony Stadium at Stillwater Area High School here in Oak Park Heights. I'm Mike Pete, and all by myself talking to myself. That's chaos theory for you. It's the final game of the final day of the regular season for lacrosse. The Stillwater Area Ponies, a top 10 team in the state, take on the Minnehaha Academy Red Hawks. Minnehaha ranked 10th, Stillwater ranked 7th. As you know, lacrosse, a one-class sport. The Ponies hoping to end the regular season on a 10-game winning streak. They have not lost in a long time, in lacrosse time anyway. Their last loss came April 18th against Chanhassen. The Red Hawks. Haven't played a whole lot of games compared to some other schools. They had three games that were canceled due to inclement weather, which is becoming a thing here in the month of April. And then they lost another game with Waconia. It's been a chilly, cool, wet spring, and in some cases snowy. The Red Hawks have only lost once, but they're 7-1, and one, and again, not a whole lot of games in comparison to the Ponies. As the teams take the field, Stillwater wearing the white, Minnehaha wearing the black. Stillwater will wear the home jerseys. I'm going to say Stillwater ranked number one in the section, section four. Minnehaha, if you go by QRF, would be ranked second behind Park of Cottage Grove, a team that Stillwater defeated 14-4 to on Tuesday on a windy, rainy evening in Cottage Grove. A little too wet for us to head down there. Abe is ready to start this up, and we hope you are too. It's the final high school game of the regular season we will bring you in 2018-19. Of course, we'll have plenty in subsequent seasons. And wasting little time is Claire Nelson. She wins the faceoff and takes it all the way to get the Red Hawks on the board. The Red Hawks, even though they haven't played a whole lot of games, they've got a feast in Claire Nelson. She is their playmaker. She just picked up her 35th goal of the season, 60 points. In fact, in only eight games, she has amassed more points than Stillwater's top offensive player, Meredith Perry. She has 54 points. Claire Nelson just picked up her 60th. So eight seconds into the first half, Minnehaha gets on the board. This time it's the Ponies who win the faceoff. Will they look to do the same here? No, they're going to run a cycle play instead. And that is going to be a foul. And a foul on the Red Hawks. It will go against Emma Barbroic. And that's going to mean a free shot for Meredith Perry, as we just said, one of the players to watch for the Ponies. She and Annie McGuire have formed quite the duo this season. McGuire waits for the signal. And she's hard to stop. Off effectively a penalty shot, ties it up. Only 28 seconds of game time have elapsed and we're already tied 1-1. And Stillwater, not afraid to score. And Minnehaha coming off a monstrous win as they were finally able to get that Waconia game in. They beat them 22 to nothing. And as we said, the Ponies, they can rack up goals in bunches as well. They beat Roseville 18-7, Eastridge 16-3, Moundsview, they blanked them 14-0, Forest Lake. They won that one in an entertaining game that we had live on Valley Access Channels, 13-8, and as we noted, a 14-4 win over Park of Cottage Grove. That will be Stillwater Ball. Perry, 43 goals, now 44. And Annie McGuire, 35 on the season. That pass a little too long. So we are going the direction of Minnehaha. Right, 
And speaking of Minnehaha, Claire Nelson, take a look at some of these splits. Well, I'll have to tell you in a moment because Minnehaha had trouble getting the ball upfield and it was intercepted by Caitlin Shanahan, number 16, and Stillwater will get another cycle play going. There's Tara Noggle, one of the seniors who was honored before the game. Perry, not a senior yet. Oh, had an opening, and I think a Minnehaha player got in there for the stop. She dumps it off to Grace Lilla. She has nowhere to go, and the ball is scooped up by the Red Hawks. Stick check from behind. That pays off. I think that was Noggle, and that stripped the ball from Kenzie Malone, number six. Here comes Lauren Anen, the hockey crossover. Centering pass, textbook goal. Einen with the dime. Annie McGuire with the first goal of the game. And that goal comes. At the 314 mark of the first half, as you know, the clock stops for a score. Annie McGuire, the sophomore midi. As we said, she and Meredith Perry, a terrific tandem. Annie McGuire has really come on strong over the last several games. She has seven hat tricks on the season, including three in a row, five goals against Apple Valley, seven goals against Roseville, and four against Park of Cottage Grove. It's the Red Hawks who win the faceoff here. And that shot is wide, but Minnehaha did have a trailer. And it's a little hard to read the names and numbers. There's Kenzie Malone on Minnehaha's side, the red on black. Not the easiest to make out, but we'll do our best. Stillwater with a 2-1 lead. Nice job by Stillwater's defense as they push Grace Nikoloff out. And Minnehaha had no place to go. Nikoloff's pass off the mark, and the Ponies force the turnover. McGuire had a modest start to the season, just three goals in her first three games, and then she really turned it on offensively. Four straight hat tricks. Then only scored two goals against White Bear Lake. That was a 15-3 win, so not that big a deal. And as we said, five against Apple Valley, seven against Roseville. That's a sock trick for those who don't know the term. And Park of Cottage Grove, four goals. So the last three games, McGuire with 16 goals, now 17 if you include the one she scored. And Stillwater going to move the ball up. Here's Lauren Enan, as we said. A hockey crossover. One of the seniors who was honored is a gymnastics crossover, Sammy Chang, although she will be going to play lacrosse in college at Lindenwood. There was a foul on the Red Hawks. That stopped play momentarily. And a good stick check by Emma Barboic. Emma off to the races. And then she is checked from behind. Grace Lilla says right back at you, but Minnehaha able to keep possession. They draw the foul. And this will be Barboic. Just outside the zone here, and she opts not to drive it. She's going to look for a passing target instead. That allows Sammy Chang to get on her. Minnie trying to break free. Stillwater protecting the interior. There's number 25, Mara Valmi Jones, one of the captains. And 
Going in for the score is Michaela Arnold. So Minnehaha ties it up at two with 20 minutes and 16 seconds left in the first half. Michaela Arnold with her sixth goal of the season. As we said, Claire Nelson far and away the most productive member on offense for the Red Hawks. But Grace Nikoloff, 18 goals. Olivia Nelson, 18 goals. Ella Berg, 16 goals. So those are going to be some of the other folks to keep an eye on. Claire Nelson, 25 Starting assists. On Canby, number 13, Michaela Arnold. No assist credited there. But Arnold makes it a 2-2 game. And on Stillwater's end, we spoke of the dynamic duo, Tara Nongle, 21 goals, Grace Lilla, 17. So there are some options with these two. Both would be underdogs to win state with Prior Lake, EP, and Chanhassen among some of the top tier contenders. But the Stillwater team has reached the state tournament every year, eight years in a row. And if they reach the section final, and there's every indication to believe they will, Valley Access Channels will have live coverage. Stillwater figures to host. And then the section final will be played at White Bear Lake, neutral site. A flag went up. The goal will not count. That definitely was a foul on Minnehaha. The goal will not count, but Grace Maddox will get a free shot here. And that penalty, that foul on the Red Hawks <laughs> was a good foul because their goalie, Meredith Laval, got the save. Laval, 703 save percentage on the season. And Stillwater's goalie, Laney Charlson, 538, but Stillwater hasn't needed her services a whole lot over the last nine games. And Charlson does hold the state tournament record for most saves in a game. Ponies forced the turnover. And the pass back up to the point. Mishandled by Grace Lilla. Ponies able to recover. Noggle will get things reset for the Ponies. Noggle to Lilla. The cycle play continues. They almost got the centering pass in and unfortunately wasn't clean enough. We do have another whistle here. And it's going to be Stillwater ball. So I was going to say McGuire had the centering pass to Eliza Darby. She had a lane, and apparently Darby was hit. And that put her inside the crease. So another foul. And we're going to have a yellow card here. Or I thought we were. There it is. And the yellow is issued to Eliza Darby. So that will take some pressure off the Red Hawks. They will take over. And Darby hit with a yellow card. The rules regarding penalties 
differs somewhat compared to the boys' version. You don't see as many man-up scenarios, but they do happen in girls' lacrosse. And Minnehaha man's up. I should say woman's up. This is girls, after all. Claire Nelson with the sidearm, and that gives the Red Hawks a 3-2 lead. It's the second goal of the game for Nelson. Sorry. And her 36th of the season. When you consider the reduced number of games on Minnehaha's schedule compared to other teams, a lot of that had to do with poor weather. It's remarkable how many goals Nelson has racked up. That face-off is going to go out of bounds. And it looks like we're going to have a do-over. And in the case of Nelson, you know, she didn't have one game where she lit up the scoreboard because she has been lighting it up Almost all season. Four goals or more in seven games. The only time she did not reach that mark was a 6-4 loss to Breck when she scored just once. And we're going to have a foul on Stillwater after the Red Hawks won the faceoff. Nelson tried to get the ball up front. And this Red Hawks team, as we said, a top 10 team. They'll have a good chance of making it out of their section. Centering pass and a deke and a beauty. Mara Valmy jones makes it a 4-2 game in favor of the Red Hawks. Uh, Abe's taking a bow and I would do the same. That was an impressive play. Mara Valmy jones with her 13th goal of the year, and, Mc or not McGuire, Nelson will pick up the assist. She can dish them out as much as she can score. So Nelson making her imprint in the first few minutes Sorry, of this contest. Valmy jones, jones, the junior, and the Red Hawks win another faceoff. They... Could extend this lead. Kenzie Malone had an opening for a minute. Centering pass, almost intercepted, but it's going to be a foul on the Ponies. And a chance for the Red Hawks here. This is Olivia Nelson, number nine. And she has 18 goals on the season. Charlson will deny her a 19th goal. And that is a big save by Charlson. And then the lead pass was too long. And that's going to hand the ball right back to Minnehaha on Stillwater's side of the field. This is Malone. Malone usually gets things going, listed as a defender, but will initiate the offense for the Red Hawks. Little spin move by Nelson, Claire Nelson, and then she's hit and draws the foul. And that's going to give her a free look. Nelson already with two goals, seven hat tricks in eight games. She can make it eight right here. Eight hat tricks it is. And a tip of the hat to Claire Nelson. And Minnehaha fans will see a lot of Claire Nelson in the years to come. She is just a freshman. 
Scoring for Minnehaha Academy number five. Claire Nelson. Claire Nelson. A sensational first half. Three goals and an assist, and she is piling on the points. As you know, Minnehaha. A couple years ago, dealt with the serious incident involving their school when an explosion damaged their campus. It is nearly rebuilt. It will fully reopen next year. And the last couple of years, the students have resided in temporary facilities as far as classes go. But piece by piece, Minnehaha has rebuilt what was lost. And I got a chance to see some of the redeveloped campus back in the winter. I can't wait till it fully reopens and they can get the Red Hawks back to where they belong. Nelson won the faceoff, by the way. Stillwater takes over, and this is something we haven't seen in a long time. The Ponies trailing in a game. We mentioned they're on a nine-game winning streak. Nice move in transition. Any McGuire couldn't get a grip on the field, and we're going to have... A flag. A foul took place from behind. I didn't see it, but it's a break for the ponies here. Andy McGuire will get a chance at Meredith Leval. And this is a goal the ponies would like to have. Andy McGuire will give it to them. Well, if your number is five, this is a good day. Because the fives are giving us some high fives. And I'll show myself out. Although with Abe, I probably should have done that years ago. Now, if you don't know, I have a running gig with Abe, actually several. And that's why he's never appeared on camera. <laughs> Annie McGuire with her second goal of the game. 37 on the season, as we said. 16 goals in her past three games. Claire Nelson wins the faceoff and showcases her vertical in the process. Red Ox taking some time. Well outside the zone here. They do get it to Claire Nelson. She tries to muscle her way through defenders and will draw the foul. Well, I guess if you can't muscle your way through. Draw enough contact to get the call in your favor. So she will set up just outside the zone. Oh no, she will set up inside the zone. She's in scoring range here. And for Clara Nelson, that's academic. If she gets a free look, odds are she's going to put it in. Four goals and that streak of four or more in the last seven games for the Red Hawks. Counting this one will continue. Seven games with four or more. That is something to admire. Timeout Stillwater. They trail 6 to 3 with 11:19 to go. Stillwater takes timeout. Yeah. 
So that gives us a little bit of time to sing praises for Claire Nelson. Again, what she's doing as a freshman in a limited number of games is flat out remarkable. You wonder where she would be if Minnehaha had been able to play their full schedule. Again, a couple of games they were unable to play due to weather. So they lost Buffalo and Southwest Christian. But again, just one loss to Breck. They have won big. They've scored 20 on two occasions, 22 nothing over Waconia on a windy, wet Tuesday, and 20 to nothing over St. Croix Prep, 13 1 over Eastview, 14 1 over Holy Angels. And I underestimated them, or I shortchanged them a bit. They beat Hermantown Proctor 21 to 1, so make that three games with 20 or more, and they almost got a fourth when they beat Visitation St. Paul Academy Co op 19 to 4. So many haha, -ha, when they win, they can do it big. And here's something that might surprise you. The state leader in goals for lacrosse, Maddie Seifert from Hutchinson, she has 100. And here I am talking about how impressive it is to score 34 goals, now 38 in just nine games, but you know, there's some talent out there. Eden Prairie, Prior Lake have been the perennials in the sport. Chan Hassan ranked third. That mini ha ha lost to Breck. That came against the team that is now ranked fourth in the standings. Stillwater, the only suburban East team in the top 10. Eden Prairie with one loss. Prior Lake still undefeated. The only undefeated team left in the top 10. Stillwater takes over and they got to get some things going their way. Meredith Perry had nowhere to go. Claire Nelson, by the way, nowhere close to the top 10 in goals, but she does hold a tie for third in assists entering this game. She has one unofficially. And as we said, she's a freshman with a bright future in this sport. Stillwater draws a foul. They're going to get a free shot. And that shot is off the mark. For Manny McGuire, Meredith Perry was closer to the ball. And... She'll get it from a pass by her competitor, Emma Barboric. A tinge of sportsmanship in the midst of battle, and Annie McGuire goes off speed, top shelf. That's where all the cookies are. And make mine chocolate chip. Annie McGuire chips Stillwater's deficit down to two. And with that, McGuire has her fourth straight hat trick and her eighth of the season. Scoring for Stillwater, number five, Andrew McGuire with the assist to number eight, Meredith Perry. Meredith Perry with her first assist of the game. In case you're wondering, Abe almost choked himself to death with my pun about cookies. He's still here. Nine thirty-six left in the first half. Let's see if that Stillwater goal can get them motoring. They win a scrum for the faceoff. And streaking her way downfield, number 13, Ellie Fedorowski. We have a whistle, and it appears a foul on Minnehaha. Thank you. 
Fedorowski. Will set the offense. Weaves away through traffic. But a stick check from a mini ha ha defender. Stops her in her tracks. Andy McGuire gets the ground ball. What a dish to Perry. McGuire to Perry. Forget the cookies. We're going straight for the ice cream. So, McGuire repays the favor. And Perry with her second goal of the game. McGuire with her first assist. And the Ponies now trail by one, six to five. Sixteen fifteen is the official time of the goal. Abe says this is a good game, and I would agree. This is an entertaining first half. One that makes you wonder what goes into the QRF. Again, Park, the number one team in Section 3 where Minnehaha is, but two days ago, Stillwater ran over Park 14-4 to to win the Suburban East Conference title, reclaiming that throne after Creighton Durham Hall beat them a year ago. Stillwater's losses did not come against any conference teams. Their losses came to Breck and Chanhassen. We had that Breck game. That was a tight one. Stillwater tried to rally back. Came up a little bit short. Whoa! Meredith Perry puts Mitty Haha on the spin cycle. Extra rinse. And Perry. Joins the hat trick club. Mini Haha is going to call a timeout. And Meredith Perry, she's going to be squeaky clean after putting Mini Haha on the wash. And we're tied at six. As we said, this is the final regular season high school broadcast of the 2018-19 school year, but we should be back with plenty more next fall. We have a few schools uh, that can't seem to get enough of us. And if you would like to support a TSB television broadcast, there are two ways for you to do so. Patreon.com slash TSB television if you'd like to make a monthly sponsorship and paypal.me slash TSB television if you would prefer a one-time contribution. Lots of great perks. We can get your name on the credits. You could even join me in the booth. And there's even a tier where I will follow you on social media. If you can believe it, I'll give you a follow if you give me a boost. So Meredith Perry, with a hat trick, she and McGuire both have hat tricks, and Perry racked them up in the early part of the year. Three straight hat tricks to start the season. Five of her first six games had hat tricks. And overall, Meredith Perry just picked up her 10th hat trick of the year. She also had a sock trick alongside McGuire in the win over Roseville, scoring six goals. Other highlights, five against White Bear Lake, five against Moundsview, and those three straight hat tricks to start the season. They were all four goal games, four in the win over Lakeville North, four in the win over, or loss to Breck, and then four in the loss to Chanhassen. And McGuire and Perry will be back for one more year with Perry being the junior, McGuire the sophomore. I know Rick Wright spoke highly of their development and leadership and he feels the chemistry, the camaraderie that is formed with those two and some of the other vets on this team. He's paid big dividends, so the Ponies trail by three. They've scored three in a row to tie it up. And as Abe put it, a brand new game. This game's certain to brighten up the mood on a chilly,
cloudy evening here at Oak Park Heights. But this time of the year, the leaves are green instead of brown. And Abe figured out where I was going with that. This is what happens when you call games by yourself. You dive into pop culture references, more so than usual. Here is Fedorowski moving the ball up midfield. Now gets into the attacking side for the Ponies. Got to watch out for that stick check. Fedorowski. Over to Lilla. Lilla. Tries to go back deep behind the net to number 44, Kitty Kangas. Stillwater recovers. They get it to Perry. Her shot is off the mark, but there is no one from any haha -ha behind the net, so that's going to be Stillwater's ball easily. And on dead ball situations, whether it's a foul or a not a bounce play, just feed the ball to Annie McGuire and she'll take care of things for you. Annie McGuire with goal number four. 20 goals in the last four games, including tonight. But we have a penalty here or an injury. Claire Nelson going off the field. She's going to get looked at by the trainer, so it was an injury stoppage. And it looks like Claire Nelson's okay. That would be disastrous for the Red Hawks. Nelson with three goals already. McGuire picks up her fourth of the game. Annie McGuire with 39 on the season. Face-off violation on the Ponies. That will give the ball to the Red Hawks. The Ponies have scored four in a row. Rallies are a big part of this game, and especially with halves, that gives you a lot of time to develop them. And the Ponies doing just that. They retake the lead. Actually, if I'm not mistaken, okay, they do retake the lead. And if I'm not mistaken, and I rarely am, it is their first lead since they were up two to one. Ponies trying to get the ball before it goes out of bounds. And I think Fedorowski, okay, I thought she stepped on the line, but the official who's closer than I am said a foul was made. Now, as I was going to say before McGuire scored that last goal, after a foul or a stoppage in play, the team with possession restarts the action. The defense cannot move until the offensive player does. And there's Minnehaha playing some stingy defense. That's Grace Nikoloff getting the stop. She's having a little trouble scooping it up. Red Hawks still unable to corral it. And that ball's gonna roll out of bounds. No, it won't. Nikoloff got the save, but it went right into Sammy Chang's stick, and then her pass is off. We've got a little hot potato going on, and that's gonna be a foul on Noggle as she collided with a Red Hawks player. Follow the bouncing ball. Apparently the ball is lava. Not potato or the ball is lava. You heard the floor is lava? We've got a whole new spin on it. <laughs> Four and a half to go in the first half. Here's Claire Nelson. Three goals already. Four goals, I should say. Centering pass and then a low sidearm from Ella Berg, the seventh grader. A lot of youth on this mini ha ha team. They've got a few seniors as well, but. Berg, a seventh grader, Nelson, a freshman. They're gonna have a strong foundation. A 
Officials rule Stillwater ball. Ellie Fedorowski. Is waiting for everyone to get set here. The clock's still running. And I like this move by Stillwater. Sometimes you're in a hurry to move the ball up. You do have time to get the ball across midfield, so use it to your advantage. Fedorowski does. You don't need to force a pass just for the sake of it. And risks turning it over on your side of the field. McGuire. Oh, I thought she would have had a hole for a minute. Instead feeds it to Perry. Perry's going to try this spin move. The wraparound, that doesn't work, but Enan is there. Enan, uh, she stepped inside the crease, it looked like. And indeed she did. Enan tried to avoid it, but could not do so. At Stillwater, the crease is clearly visible, marked in red because they wouldn't use blue here. Blue, not a Stillwater color. That would be blasphemy, putting blue on this field. Stillwater ball, I don't know where I'm going with this. Enan picks it up. Less than two minutes to go in the first frame. And plenty of time for the Ponies, who lead 7-6 on a 4-0 scoring run. McGuire couldn't get free on that spin move, but she does draw the foul. So that stops the clock with 141. Now the clock does stop late in the half for fouls and other incidents. And Annie McGuire who has four goals, can make it a fifth. And McGuire deeks her way to the net for goal number five. Number five for number five. That's a lot of fives. And Annie McGuire, she's getting plenty of high fives and I think she'll get plenty of high fives at the season-ending banquet. That is her 40th goal this season. That makes it two Stillwater players with 40 goals on the season. And what have I done? I'm starting a series of five related one-liners up here in the press box. I've heard five alive. Uh, there's Mambo number five, if you remember that song. Five for fighting. If I'm not careful, I'm going to get myself in trouble. So the last four games, McGuire, five goals, seven goals, four goals, and now five goals in the first half. 21 goals in the last four games. And we still have another half to play. Stillwater wins the faceoff, and they can extend this 5-0 run. Look who has the ball, it's number five, but she doesn't have a lane to attack yet. And still some time here. Flag goes up to signal one minute, or did something else happen here? Now you wouldn't put up a flag to signal one minute. So a delayed penalty assessed to Minnehaha. That gives McGuire the ball back with 57 seconds. Too far outside the zone. So she'll dump it off to Katie Kangas. Pony's looking for an opening. They tried to thread the needle up the middle and it didn't work out. That was 27, Gracie Bancroft. 30 seconds. Still a good close for the Ponies after trailing by three. You don't want to give the Redhawks 
a goal back here, but to go down three and then retake the lead, I have to feel that Rick Wright and the Stillwater team will exhale for a bit. Minnehaha pass off the mark. They do recover, and they are running out of time here, 13 seconds. Here's Emma Barboic. She was looking for help, tried to find somebody, couldn't make out the number. And the ball is just going to bounce around. Naga will pick it up, so the Red Hawks will not get a chance to score. And the Ponies trail by three. Not that long ago, but they score five unanswered to end the first half. And they lead eight to six in this battle of top 10 teams in girls lacrosse. It's been a two woman show for the Ponies. You've heard of Batman and Robin? Well, move over for the female dynamic duo and Meredith Perry and Annie McGuire will talk more about their first half performance. When we return, you're watching High School Girls Across. Stillwater leads Minnehaha eight to six. If you'd like to sponsor a TSB television broadcast, Patreon is the place. Sponsorships start at just $1 a month. Visit patreon.com slash TSB television and make a pledge for premier Twin Cities sports coverage. Mike beat and all by myself talking to myself. That's chaos theory. But Stillwater sorting things out amidst some early chaos in the first half. They trailed six to three since then. They have scored five unanswered to end the first half, giving them an eight six lead. It's been a two woman show for the Ponies, but sometimes two is all you need. Annie McGuire with five goals, Meredith Perry with three, and the two also have an assist to each other. And that's the story on Stillwater's end. Mini Ha Ha, they got four goals from Claire Nelson, who is having a fantastic freshman season. As we mentioned earlier, that's a name you're gonna hear a lot of in seasons to come if you're a Red Hawks fan. Goals also came from Mara Valmi Jones and Michaela Arnold, but it's been the Perry and McGuire show. I'm sure if you put the Perry McGuire, that would sound like a good name for a musical act or a comedy act. Perry McGuire. And if I'm not mistaken, oh, that was Perry Como I was thinking of, wasn't it? Much different show much different era. Minnehaha wins the face off there wearing the black, Stillwater wearing the white and it was the Red Hawks who scored after winning the opening face off but Lenny Charlson says I don't think so to Claire Nelson. Big save by Laney the junior and that's big because it was Claire Nelson who started the scoring, winning the faceoff and streaking all the way up to the net, scoring in eight seconds. Here's Gracie Bancroft. It's the final regular season game Across the state for lacrosse. Quick stick, Enan to Perry. And Perry pulls out her sword and slashes her way in for goal number four on the day. Well, I'm glad you like that, Abe. <laughs> the play or my, the play? Oh, oh I, okay, I, I get it now. Yeah. Okay, I thought you would be mesmerized by my narration, but I see I was wrong. So, Enan picks up her second assist. You see, this is what happens when you're by yourself. You start having conversations with your camera ops. It's a scary thing. Perry with her fourth goal of the game. Enan with her second assist. Forty-seven goals on the season for Meredith Perry. As we noted, her third straight hat trick. On, 
And a foul right after the faceoff. That's going to hand the ball right back to the Ponies, who have scored six in a row. Yeah, Perry. As we said, three straight hat tricks. She is a little unpredictable where, you know, she can put up some big numbers, four or five, and then you sprinkle in some one or two goal games. But she's been consistent overall. And that's why she and McGuire have propelled this Stillwater team to nine straight wins, and they are in good position for their 10th. Foul on the Red Hawks. That's going to set the Ponies up in scoring range. That was a tough shot, though. McGuire looked like she was trying to find Katie Kangas on the backdoor play. And it said the Red Hawks pick it up, and that is a foul. <laughs> that was pretty clear as Emma Barboric tried to move it up. Kate Leval, the head coach for the Red Hawks. Michael Evil, the assistant, so I imagine lacrosse is a family sport on that end. And another foul. Barboric taking a couple of hard hits. The clock stops with 22-21. We're going to have another yellow issued. This time to Grace Lilla, the junior. And the Red Hawks will get a free look here. Emma Barboric. <laughs> now Abe is lobbing puns in my direction. I guess I had it coming. Barboric with seven goals, or six goals, seven points on the season. She'll have a chance to pick up a big one here for the Red Hawks. If she can convert, and she does, with a little dose of velocity. So Emma Barboric, she might have a couple of bruises after the hits she took on that drive, but I'm sure she'll walk it off with pride as she ends the Stillwater scoring run. It's been a while since the Red Hawks got on the board. So Barboric scores to make it nine to seven. Ball is still loose, but the faceoff is eventually won by the Red Hawks and Kenzie Malone. Malone oh, tried to find Vami Jones on the centering pass. It was too high for her reach. And the Red Hawks will back off here. Still plenty of time, even with running time in the girls' version of lacrosse. Malone. And nowhere to go, and Stillwater with a key defensive stop. Ponies drew the foul, and here they come. Looks like Fedorowski, she's got it. She'll feed it to McGuire. McGuire with five goals. Perry to Noggle. What a beauty. The extra pass. Minnehaha, they were keying on McGuire and Perry, but they left Tara Noggle. So McGuire will get the hockey assist. That won't count, unfortunately, in the stack category. Perry will get the assist. And Noggle on senior night. Picks up her 22nd goal of the year. 
Meredith Perry picks up her second assist. So Perry with six points. The interesting thing about Stillwater is they don't have one player that racks up assists the way other teams do. But the Ponies do make it a three-goal lead again. Now Nelson on the other end for the Red Hawks. And she has 26 assists on the year. But you look at Stillwater, you know, Perry, she has two to go up to 13, but a lot of these goals come on individual merit. Claire Nelson is fouled from behind. She won another faceoff, and you know what she's going to do the moment she picks up that ball, and now she'll get a free look, a free shot at Laney Charlson. It's been a while since Claire Nelson has scored. And that drought ends. Claire Nelson using a deke of her own. And Laney Charlson couldn't get the stop that time. So Nelson with her fifth goal of the game, her first of the second half. She had not scored since the 12-19 mark in the first half. So it had been a little while. So with that, Claire Nelson goes up to 39 goals on the year. As we mentioned in the first half, an impressive stat line. And that's without two games. If you had those two extra games, who knows where she would be. Probably you know, second, perhaps, in the state for assists. But Nelson, with her second game, or fourth game, I should say, with five or more, she has scored six goals twice. And she still has plenty of time for it. So Minnehaha refusing to vanish here. They don't want to get dusted. And it's 10 to eight. It's still a neck and neck game, and as we've seen, these two are roughly equal, both having close losses to Breck. The Red Hawks with just one loss. Again, two games were canceled as a result of poor weather. So Buffalo and Southwest Christian, well, we'll never know how many haha would have played against those two teams, but if you're seven and one, you gotta be pretty good. Stillwater with the ball. And at 10 and two, they're not too shabby themselves. As we said, nine straight wins, looking to make it 10 to end the regular season and carry another dose of momentum into sections, which will start next week. Stillwater figures to have an easy time in the quarters, and that is going to be a crease, perhaps. Uh, I thought it might have been a crease, but it looked like Perry was outside of it. One thing's for sure, if I come back and do lacrosse next season and with my Valley Access Channel's partnership, I imagine I will, I'm got to find some lacrosse-minded people. Back to action, Meredith Perry. A rare misfire on her part. Her shot goes wide left. It will stay Stillwater ball. Or will it? Okay, it was the Red Hawks who were closer. Leval waiting to dump the ball off to somebody. At least he's looking that way. Leval still can't find a target. If this were football, this would be akin to the secondary, and finally she has to go the short route. That was a good 10, 15 seconds.
Now the Red Hawks are on the move. Their shot is wide left. And it will be Minnehaha ball. One of the officials signaled a push foul. As Grace Nikoloff was moving the ball up, so Nikoloff has a chance to make this a one goal game. And I believe that Olivia Nelson did a fine job moving the ball up. Grace Nikoloff winds up, fires, and laces the net. Nikoloff with her first goal of the game and the Red Hawks on a surge of their own. It's 10 to nine. Grace Nikoloff, the senior. And she picks up her 19th of the year, as we noted earlier. Even though Claire Nelson gets the bulk of attention for Minnehaha's team, they have other playmakers. You know, Nikoloff, one of them. Olivia Nelson, Ella Berg. And some other young guns on this Red Hawks team. Phaedra Vang, she has nine goals on the year. They have three seventh graders listed on the varsity roster. Ella Berg, who has a few goals, 16 to be precise. Red Hawks win the faceoff, draw the foul. Nelson tried to pass up front and the pass was intercepted, but a foul is called and it's gonna go against Minnehaha. Terrific timing on the part of Stillwater to stop a potential game tying goal. And that was number 29, Jacqueline Colzer, who jumped in for the interception. Stillwater lost control. Tara Noggle had the ball poked away and she couldn't corral it in time. Minnehaha takes over. Meredith Leval, let's see if she can find a target this time. She had difficulty and then just had to go the short dump route. Great job by Stillwater to cover up the passing lanes and Leval looks like she's in the same predicament. She steps outside the extended crease area. And again, has to go the short route. This is Barboric. And Barboric has had one too many visits with the turf here at Stillwater Area High School, at Pony Stadium to be precise. Red Ox, oh, they had a moment, they had an opening. And the ball just slipped outside the stick. Nikoloff has it now. Get it there, safe. Get it there, safe. Get set, get set. Yep, get set right there. You've got to figure the ponies will keep an eye on Claire Nelson. She had a great first half. She has five goals overall. Red Ox try the wrap around. Charleston read it all the way. Pick it up, pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. The ball is finally corralled by Claire Nelson. She deeps a defender, goes up front, and the Red Hawks tie it up. Claire Nelson shakes her defender and hooks up on the quick stick play. And we've got a brand new game again. I couldn't make out the number for who scored. But it's 10 all. It's Ella Berg who gets credit for the goal. Ella Berg, the seventh grader, 
her 17th goal of the year. And she'll have plenty more goals in the years to come if she continues in this sport. Red Hawks won the faceoff. It's been back and forth all game. Nelson, here she comes. Will she take it herself? No, Stillwater crowds her and she'll have to back off. Red Hawks will run a cycle play. Keep it safe. 13.28 and counting. But even in running time, that's an eternity to play. And with these two teams going back and forth, who knows? Nelson was thinking about it and said, dumps it off to Nikoloff on the lob. Stillwater trying to keep them away from the middle. This time the ponies stay on Berg. And the Red Hawks will reset once more. No shot clock at the high school level. It goes without saying that even with 12 minutes and change, whoever scores the next goal will have a crucial advantage in this one. Nelson shakes a defender, fires, scores! Nelson with her third sock trick of the season, and the Red Hawks are up 11 to 10 in this entertaining duel between a pair of top 10 teams. What an ending to this regular season for both schools. That with sheer willpower on the part of Nelson, outran her defender, found just enough space to fire, and she found the net. Claire Nelson, now with 40 goals on the season. Forty goals, three sock tricks in just nine games. As we said, who knows what you would have done with a couple more, but this freshman is something special. Face off goes to the ponies. And we are going to have a yellow card issued to the Red Hawks and Grace Nikoloff. It happened away from the ball. I couldn't see what transpired, but it's the first yellow assessed to the Red Hawks. So that will send Nikoloff to the penalty area. Ponies trying to make a transition play happen. Fedorowski didn't like what she saw there, so waits for a passing target, finds one in Lilla. McGuire, oh, she had an opening there, but the pass was not on point. Chance for the Red Hawks here. Stillwater with a stick check. They poke it loose. Terranago picks up the loose ball. And one thing with this Stillwater team, you know, everybody's capable of getting those ground balls. Andy McGuire led everyone with 43 of them entering this game. A foul on the Red Hawks and on the Minnehaha side, Claire Nelson with 47. So, you know, a lot of teams or a lot of players who are capable of scooping up those ground balls and turning the flow of the game. And we're going to have an official's timeout for the trainer. The 
There was a little bit of confusion, and the officials sending the trainer out to check out Claire Nelson, I believe. Ten fifty four to go. As we noted, section play begins next week for both boys and girls teams. Stillwater should be the one, regardless of what happens here. And looking at their section. Matamidai may be their biggest contender. Big chance for the Ponies, meanwhile, and they make the most of it. Nelson on the bench, and the Ponies tie it up. And we're tied again for the third time in this game. Meredith Perry joins the five-goal club. She and McGuire both have five goals each. It's been that kind of a game. The big names for both teams are stepping up in big ways. So Perry, up to 48 goals on the season. As I was saying, looking at sections, Stillwater, their biggest contender may be Matamidi. Kill Murray also a solid group at 11 and two, both averaging more goals per game than Stillwater. Uh, but neither team on Stillwater's schedule this year. Redhawks won the face off. And each possession, each drive on offense becomes more critical as time winds down. Minnehaha maintains possession. Stop, 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 stop moving. So Perry, with her fourth game of the season, scoring five or more. We're getting some rare statistical accomplishments from the big players tonight. Nikolov, up top. Gets pushed. And this will be a prime scoring chance for the Red Hawks. She's just outside the red line there, the red semi-circle. Nikoloff fires and just a bit outside. Stillwater was closest. They'll take over. They had somebody right there next to the crease on the bottom of the eight. And she was out there. She wasn't on the eight. She wasn't shooting She was on the eight. She wasn't shooting She wasn't? No. Okay. What's the matter? Keep pointing the wrong way. Keep pointing the wrong way. I think Stillwater may have stepped out of bounds. That's going to turn the ball right back to Minnehaha on their side of the field. And the seventh grader, Ella Berg, with the one hopper. A costly turnover by the Ponies. And Ella Berg gives Minnehaha the lead once more. Her second goal of the game. What a turn of events. An errant miscue on the part of Stillwater, but they have time to recover. Plenty of time to recover. 8.50 to go, but that was the worst case scenario. A turnover, in this case, behind your own net. That allowed Minnehaha to make a move. And just like that, 
Momentum shifts back to Minnehaha's side. Ella Berg, the seventh grader. And this could be a big win for the Red Hawks. Nikolov fires and scores on the quick stick play. Nikolov with her second goal of the game. How quickly things can change in the sport of lacrosse. 13 to 11, Red Hawks up by two. As I was saying, this could be a big win for the Red Hawks. A win here, even though they trail Park of Cottage Grove in the QRF, a win here against Stillwater, a team that beat Park by 10. That would reflect considerably well with the coaches. Stillwater wins this face off and it's not a giant crowd. Lacrosse hasn't picked up that kind of following yet, but the Ponies fans who are here trying to cheer on their home team in the last regular season game. The final tune-up of four-section play. As we were saying, Stillwater likely has done enough to lock up that one seed in section four, winning the conference. But the Red Hawks, you know, at seven and one, they lost a couple of games, so not as many opportunities to make an impression. A win over Stillwater could be the last entry on the resume to give the coaches consideration for Minnehaha and we have a stoppage here with 7.35 to go. Well, this has been a fun game throughout. Neither side is led by more than three. This is McGuire. What will she do with it? She'll pass back. And if you're Rick Wright and the Ponies, this is where a sense of urgency creeps in. Oh, and Minnehaha commits the foul inside that semicircle area, inside that crease, whatever you want to call it. And look who's got the ball. I believe it's Meredith Perry. That is the worst case scenario for the Red Hawks because Perry can make plays like that. Meredith Perry with a sock trick. And a badly needed goal for the Ponies. That brings them back within one. Meredith Perry. 49 goals and counting. And remember, playoff goals do count in the overall statistical leaderboards. Meredith Perry coming up big when the Ponies need her to. It's her second sock trick of the season. Her second of the last three games, to be precise. She scored six against Roseville, but under much different circumstances. It was a runaway win over Roseville this time they're trying to grind out a win against a well-oiled team in Minnehaha Academy. Fedorowski wins the faceoff. There's still time, but you got to think the Ponies have to convert here because with no shot clock, if you don't score, Minnehaha could start working that clock if they wanted to. Of course, this sport's a little different than basketball or some others where you can milk the clock. Oh, 
They cashed in on a gift from Minnehaha after that foul. Noggle passes to McGuire from behind, and Minnehaha was right there to knock the ball away. Foul on the Ponies, and that is going to be a yellow, it looks like. On Annie McGuire, so she will have to go to the penalty area for a while. And Minnehaha takes over. Clock stops with 534. As we said, not a giant crowd. <laughs> and some of those so-called non-revenue sports still working on getting those followings, but those who made the trek out here to Oak Park Heights, what a show. I'd say you got your money's worth. And we're still not done. Now, the Red Hawks in a favorable position. They can run out clock here with a one goal lead. Olivia Nelson takes a peek inside, tries to dump it back to Barboric, and it's a good thing no one from Stillwater was ready to pounce on it. That was a mishandled pass. So Ponies trail by one. They gave up a couple of goals in quick succession, including one on a turnover behind their own net. Barboric tried to fire a shot. It was deflected. And a slashing call, another yellow card, this time. Propelling, not slashing. I gotta get some lacrosse experts next time I do one of these. <laughs> so Emma Barboa hit with a yellow card for propelling. That is not a foul you will hear in most sports, if any sport outside of lacrosse, propelling. And Barboric hit with her second yellow card. So with that, she is out of the game. And as I understand it, the rules are similar to soccer. Miniha is going to be shorthanded the rest of the way. Another foul is called. Chance for the Ponies here. Well, Barboric is in that penalty area, so we'll keep an eye on that. The understanding from the press box is that Barboic was hit with her second yellow. And should not be able to return, but we will see. There a couple of quick yellows, though, on the Red Hawks. Fedorowski, is she going to take it herself? That shot goes just wide right. 3.40 to go. McGuire. Waiting to return. And Leval taking her time here. Leval now getting pressure by McGuire. Leval having to backpedal here. Well, she's taking up a lot of time trying to find a target. Over 30 seconds have gone by and she can't find anybody and then a foul is called. And time's winding down. Stillwater, they've got to find a way to wrestle control away from Minnehaha. As they trail by one. That I haven't seen before. She left the ball near the net, I suppose. You know, a Stillwater player can't go in the crease, so not a bad part of Minnehaha's end just to dump it on your own net and let someone else pick it up. So Leva left it for a Minnehaha teammate to scoop it up. I've never seen that before in my time covering lacrosse, but it worked out. Michaela Arnold brought the ball up to, mid, or to the Stillwater's end of the field. And now if you're the Ponies, you've got to find a way to get 
control away. You might need to send some defenders up front. We're under two minutes now. Ponies need to find a way to get the ball back if they want a chance to tie it up. Claire Nelson gets past Dean and fires, scores! Could that be the dagger for the Red Hawks? Claire Nelson swoops in for a season high seventh goal of the game. Seven goals in your final regular season game. And we've got three more seasons so, to witness such immense talent from an incredible freshman. This has been an incredible game. Claire Nelson, what a move. You know, Stillwater had to get a little riskier on the defensive end. Nelson recognized that, found a lane and drove through it. And with 1.46 to go, that may be all Minnehaha needs, but we've seen it happen a couple of times where after a face-off win, a scoring chance quickly ensues. And we're going to have a dramatic pause here as Stillwater calls a timeout. Their last of the game, as I understand it, 146 to go. What a game. What a game. Claire Nelson, seven goals. Nelson had two sock tricks previously, six against St. Croix Prep and six against Visitation. What a way to end the season. A new season high. And a reminder, this is our final scheduled broadcast of the 2018-19 school year, but we will be back for more high school sports in the fall, Stillwater and everywhere else in the metro. And if you would like to help out, there's two ways for you to do so. Patreon.com slash TSB television and PayPal.me slash TSB television. Some great perks are available if you want to put in a sponsorship. And we've been happy to have you with us throughout our coverage of high school sports. We started here in Stillwater back in the fall with volleyball, a team that reached the state tournament. The Stillwater girls across team has a good chance of reaching state Valley Access channels. If they do make it to the section final, Stillwater that is, will have live coverage of the section final on June 5th. And that could be a busy night because the baseball team could be playing for a state tournament berth of their own at CHS Field. That is certainly the hope here in Oak Park Heights with their ace pitcher, Drew Gilbert and company. So it's fitting that we end where we started here at Stillwater and we've been glad to have you again with volleyball, soccer, football, basketball, and now lacrosse. We picked up a lot of viewers and a lot of subscribers along the way and we're getting a dramatic ending between two equal teams. The Red Hawks win that faceoff. And here is where they can ice the game. Claire Nelson. All I can say is wow. It's one thing to get a hat trick. It's another to get seven goals. And we're not talking stat padding time or a runaway win like Waconia. Seven hard earned goals. And what is likely the biggest performance of the season for the freshman. And if folks didn't know who Claire Nelson was in the lacrosse community, they will now. As Nikolov and company eats up more time. Less than a minute to go. And if the Red Hawks hang on to win, as it looks like they will, that sequence where they scored a couple of goals and then 
an errant turnover on the part of the Ponies. Gave the ball to the Red Hawks behind the Stillwater net. Ella Berg cashed in moments later with a goal that put the Red Hawks up by two. 16 seconds and counting, and the Ponies are unable to wrestle control. The Red Hawks are going to hang on. As time winds down, Kenzie Malone content to run out the clock. Oh, now she's going to feed it to Claire Nelson for one more play. <laughs> We've got an encore. What was that? Nelson with the lateral, the Malone. Wow. I guess Claire wanted to go out with a bang, and she will. Eight goals on the season, on the game, I should say. 42 on the season. Red Hawks didn't need it, but... I guess Nelson saw an open lane and was calling for it. And Malone was happy to hand the ball off. So Minnehaha going to end with an exclamation point. And senior night upstaged by the Red Hawks. The nine game winning streak for the Ponies will come to an end. They'll have a chance to start a new one in sections, but the Red Hawks pick up their biggest win of the year on the biggest game of the year for Claire Nelson, 15 to 12, the final. Nelson, eight goals, eight. And two assists unofficially, 10 points. I'm not sure she's a freshman. She certainly didn't play like it tonight. And a great effort by Annie McGuire and Meredith Perry for the Ponies. McGuire with five goals and Perry with a sock trick, finishing with six but it was not enough. Red Hawks pick up a big, big win, 15 to 12. We'll try to get a word with Claire Nelson, the star of this game, as the Red Hawks move to eight and one. Stillwater will end the regular season at 10 and three, but sections await for both, and that's where the bigger prize awaits. As both try to make it state, that's a final here from Pony Stadium, 15 to 12. Minnehaha defeats Stillwater. If you'd like to sponsor a TSB television broadcast, Patreon is the place. Sponsorships start at just $1 a month. Visit patreon.com slash TSB television and make a pledge for premier Twin Cities sports coverage. And I'm joined by Claire Nelson. Claire. Last game of the regular season, you end it with a season-high eight goals. What would you make of this impressive performance? Um, I owe it all to my teammates. They, they help me. They support me. It is all them, all them. What would you make of this season? You lost a couple of games to weather, but even in just nine games, you managed to get over 40 goals on the season. You're in the top five in assists. That's a pretty incredible freshman season. Again, just, I mean, the, the hard work that goes into it with our team and everyone supporting each other. Um, I think we have one of the best attitudes in the state, and, like, that's what just pushes us through and helps me get to where I am. You were up by three. Stillwater scored five in a row to retake the lead. Then it was back and forth. What was your strategy in the second half? I think just completely changing our attitudes, making sure like we were smiling and we were motivated and that's really what pushed us through. It was an emotional game and I think we just had a great attitude and that pushed us through. And a big moment I think came when Stillwater turned the ball. I think they were out of bounds and then one of your teammates who you've been saluting, Ella Berg, the seventh grader, mm -hmm. turned it into a goal just moments later. How much of a turning point was that goal? I think it just got the momentum going and like it gets us hype and that's about like that's it like we thrive off of our hype and that just hit it off. And then you ended the game with an exclamation point you had the game wrapped up but uh, did you see an opening and say Ken tell Kenzie hey I got this or <laughs> you don't see that often in a game where you score in the closing seconds like that. I think I just saw the time left and I knew like what better way to end it than a goal? <laughs> Seven wasn't enough for you. You wanted to do one better. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I, I think, yeah, I don't really know what to say. <laughs> well, all I can say is, wow, I think uh, we're going to hear a lot about you over the next several years. You'll find out where you're seated in the section soon, and you'll try to make your way into state. Uh, 
So how are you feeling going into sections, and what would you make of this season where it was the youth movement, yourself, Ella Berg, and some other young faces at Minnehaha that propelled this team? I think, um, oh, um, trying to think. Takes as much time as you need. Um, can you try repeating the question? Sorry. Well, what's the momentum like? What's the attitude like, you know, knowing that you had this kind of performance, the season you had, how is that going to help you? with sections? Um, I think playing our game and just really supporting each other during the game is what's going to push us through to state and um, we just have to have that motivation and that's about it. <laughs> All right, you want to say hi to anybody? Um, hi, mom and dad and my grandparents are over there, my sisters, Olivia Nelson who's over there, she's my sister too. <laughs> yeah, Olivia having a fine season and same for you, congrats on the win and your eight goals and uh, I guess you've got a picture to go take so we'll let you go to that. Thanks for stopping by. Thank you so much. That was Claire Nelson, eight goals in a winning effort for the Red Hawks and that does it here from Pony Stadium and that wraps up our high school coverage for 2018-19. We'll come back in the fall with more games, but until then, for our entire crew, I'm Mike Beaton. Thanks for watching.